your credit score.
Welcome to the Phoenix Beacon Light Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we seek to be one in Christ, one in love, and one in ministry. My name is Hamilton J. Williams, and God has honored me in allowing me to serve as the senior pastor of this group of believers. We feel confident that as you worship here with us, you would experience sound Bible teaching, the dynamic preaching of the Word of God, all in a context of great fellowship. May God bless you as you worship with us today. All right. Happy Sabbath, church. Welcome to Beacon Light to our members and our visitors here today. If you are a visitor, you will be acknowledged during the 11 o'clock service. My name is Asia, and I'll be going through the announcements today. So first, we want to say a special happy birthday to all our April birthdays. Um, specifically today, we actually have a lot. Miss Anna, Miss Ella, Miss Ashley, Miss Cecilia, and Miss Kim. We want to say happy birthday to those today and those this week. Oh, my papa's on this list. So please, if you guys see them, make sure you're saying happy birthday and celebrating that they've made it through another year of life. We also have Sabbath school, not just for the adults. Please bring your children starting at 10 a.m. We have Sabbath school classes for our kindergarten cater role, juniors, teens. I'm missing one more. Or was that all? And primary. And then today we have communion, so make sure to stay after the service. We also have a gospel medical missionary training this weekend. It's starting today at 3, going till 7, and then tomorrow it is all day. So there's no excuse. If you can't stay today, we're offering it all day tomorrow, and it's going to be super, super interesting. I'm excited to be a part of it and learn as much as I can from it. Today there's also going to be lunch, so there's a lot going on today, which is fun. We're also having personal ministries going out after communion. They're going to go out into the neighborhood for about 30 minutes to greet our neighbors. So make sure you guys brought your walking shoes so then you're not stressing your feet. And we're getting out there and we're saying hello to everyone. Sorry, they're going out next week, not today. So you guys save those shoes, keep them in your car so then you're ready for next week. And then community service, which is open on the first and third Sabbath from 2 to 4, and every Tuesday from 11 to 2. They are asking people to bring in plastic bags if you have them, which, I mean, everyone should have like a box or a drawer of random plastic bags. So please bring those in. And the community service is not just for those out in the community. It's for our members as well, anyone that's in need or just needs like a little extra help, please stop by, take advantage. This is offered for everyone. All right, and then we have our power of prayer for the women's ministry. This is offered every Sabbath in the women's ministry room, which is right behind the kitchen. I've been going, not every Sabbath, but I have been going, and it's been great getting to know a lot of the women in our church and just hearing the praise reports as well as the praise requests. So please, if you have a chance, stop by, get to know the women of Beacon Light, and just fellowship with us. All right, and then men's ministry meets every third Sabbath. And on the first Sabbath, there's a combined men's and women's prayer meeting. Or the first Sabbath, did I say that? All right, and then April 13th to 14th at Glendale Seventh-day Adventist Church, there is a health rally that's sponsored by the Arizona Conference by Dr. William Sweat. So this month, there's a lot of health aspects going on, so please take advantage and then there's board meeting on Sunday, April 21st at 9 a.m. The clerks will be sending out a link for your email, so be on the lookout for that. 
And then there's prayer meeting every Wednesday. There's three ways to get on. My Mima actually called me out on last week's prayer meeting, so I feel like I have a responsibility to join upcoming. So make sure you guys are joining and you're not finding out through word of mouth, like, hey, your name was called, because then that's kind of embarrassing. So make sure we're joining prayer meeting. All right, and then this is our critical care list of prayer. We have baby Mina, Miss Beverly, and Elder Howard. If we could please, please pray for them and really spend time for um, just spending time and uh, um, really keeping them in mind, I guess is the best way to say that. And then this is also our list for those who are homebound, sick, need prayer, or if you know anyone that should be on this list, please add them. It's important to, I guess what I'm getting at is that we all have our own things that, we're, that are going on, of course, but we want to make sure that we're praying for our loved ones and our church family as well. All right, and then this week for our family prayer circle, we have the Bordeaux family, the Bostic family, Tyson and Terrell family. So we usually pick, okay, we usually pick about four families every week to pray over so that we can get through our entire church by the end of the year. So today, Elder Kester Garcia is going to be praying for the family and he can come up. As he's coming up, I just want to thank you all again for listening in for the announcements, and I will pass it over. Have a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Amen. Good morning, Beacon Light. If you can just stand with me as we go before the throne of grace this morning, petition in the Lord. Heavenly Father, it is always with a thankful heart that we come before you. Because you have been so good to us. You have blessed us immensely. And we just want to be saying thank you, Father. Thank you for your blessings, for your tender mercies. You woke us up this morning. You brought us here safely. Such a lovely morning. And we are so thankful to be in your house, giving you all the praise, the honor, and glory for all that you've done for us. For the week that has gone by where things may have been a bit rough, but you have seen us through. And then things may have been great because of your blessings. And we are thankful for the great, for the not so good, for those, all of those times. Because those times have taught us, Lord, to actually depend on you, to keep faith in you, to continue to know that you are the author and finisher of our faith. And you will continue to bless us once we put our petitions before you, Lord. We thank you for all that you continue to do. Lord, we want to raise up before you this morning, Lord, the families that are in our prayer circle today, the Bordeaux family, the Bostic family, the Tyson family, and the Terrell family. We ask that you would go by each of these homes, continue to have your presence in these homes, Lord, and, and let these families know that they are able to bring their petitions before you and, and seek your face every day. Have that honest communication with you, Lord and getting to know you. We continue to pray for our baby Mina Denson, Lord, and her family, Lord, her parents as well. For Michael and Miranda, Lord, we pray that you would continue to give them the strength to continue through this journey that they're on, Lord, and we pray for your healing hands upon uh, baby Mina. We also ask for the same for uh, Elder Howard, Lord, as he goes through his battle, Lord. Um, we just want to thank you for and, and give you all the praise for, for the blessings that you're going to bestow upon, uh, upon both baby Mina and uh, Pastor, I'm sorry, Elder Howard. We pray, Lord, that uh, what we, this morning as we go through our communion service, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for the sins that we have committed against you, Lord, where we have not taken the opportunity to let others know about you, where we have not taken the opportunity to spend time with you and in your word, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for these sins, Lord. And as we partake of um, the emblems today, Lord, that you would bless us, Lord. 
help us to get that closer relationship with you. Help us to intentionally make time to spend with you and to know you better. Bless us as we go through this day, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No mission? Morning, church. Morning. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> I am here to do our Sabbath school review. Can you turn me down some? All right, we are now entering into another quarterly, another 13 week of study. Title of this week, this, uh, this quarter's quarterly is The Great Controversy. Should be some good review. At the same time, I'm sure um, I, I'm always learning as, as I study. So, um, you know, I, I think I, what I like about the lesson study is just the ability to be able to. Um, expound on your knowledge, uh, reaffirm what you do know, and then also uh, sometimes as we discuss things with each other, just hearing how um, the Holy Spirit filters understanding through others, you know what I'm saying, kind of gives us uh, another angle to um, approach life in our Christian walk. Um, <clears throat> the title of this week's lesson is The War, Behi the War Behind All Wars. What does, that, what does that sound like it, it's going to address for us? What is, what is for, for what we know, what is the war behind all wars? End time events. It is the, the war of, of good versus evil, right? It is right versus wrong. It is um, the choice of life, whether we choose life or whether we choose death. Um, the memory text for this week comes out of Revelations 12, uh, verses 7 and 8. And reading out of the New King James Version, the Bible says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Um, the lesson opens up and it says, uh, If God is so good... Why is the world so bad? How can, God, how can a God of love allow so much evil to exist? Why do bad things happen to good people? Those are questions that, they're reasonable questions. And they're also questions that are often um, pointed at maybe why people shouldn't believe in God, why, why God is not really who he says he is, and... Um, though there, there are questions that, are, that are, are used by many, especially if they are of the approach of non, non-belief. Um, so what we're going to study in this week's lesson is, is the age-long conflict between good and evil, um, beginning with Lucifer's rebellion in heaven, and we will examine the origin of evil and God's long-suffering in dealing with sin problems. Um, they say God is what? Love, right? God is love. Lesson highlights that love can never be forced, coerced, or legislated. It is why we have been given choice. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll follow that through and, and expound on it some. Um, Lesson says to deny the power of choice is to destroy the ability to love. 
And to destroy the ability to love is to eradicate the possibility of being truly happy. God wins our allegiance by his love. He is dealing with the great controversy between good and evil in such a way that sin will never arise in the universe again. Um, So moving into Sunday's lesson, um, it highlights Revelations 12, 7 through 9. There's a question that is asked. It says, you know, it's going to ask, it asks us what, what the passage means or what does it mean to, um, to reveal, what does it reveal, reveal about freedom? And then uh, when Lucifer rebelled, in what ways could God have responded? So I'm going to read the verse and then we'll, I'll ask you guys to uh, give me what you hear. Um, it says in Revelation uh, 12, 7 through 9, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the first part of the question is, what does that passage reveal about the freedom existing in heaven and the origin of evil? Anybody have anything to add there? Ms. Kim, um, hold on. Can I get a mic? So one of the things that it it brought to my attention was that um, God doesn't force anybody to love or serve him. And even the angels had the same freedom of choice. Um, And so the the Lord allowed them to exercise their freedom of choice. Um, But in the end, you know, the choice that they made was um, had devastating consequences because not only did he get kicked out, but he led, you know, a bunch of other people who thought it sounded like a good thing, um, who also ended up being lost as well. So it's, it's to me, um, we need to cherish our opportunity to, for the freedom of choice that God provides, mm-hmm. but we also have to watch who we're looking up to and following as well. Mm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything to add there as far as what... Freedom existed in heaven and the origin of evil. Yes, sir. Morning, Elder. Um, you know, speaking about the origin of evil, it's pride, you know. It's pride. It's that um, attitude that says, you know, why can't I be more? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> why can't I be like the most high? That was Lucifer's issue. And he took it to others who sympathize with him. He used, obviously, some strategies to get people on his side and to back up uh, his complaints, and obviously they got dealt with along with him, you know, so, and it's still going on today, you know, that that pridefulness, that willfulness, that wanting to be more, you know, all the things that are in opposition to humility and just serving and just wanting to do the Lord's will, you know, we want to be, sometimes we want to have that exaltation, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that example of what happened to Satan and his angels should be a reminder of, to us to not have that spirit, but to just to be humble and ask to do God's will. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, you know, for me, you know, just kind of reading, reading over it and just looking at it, man, like, you know, I mean, the way, the way that Lucifer was, was, was created, um, he was created as Lucifer, he was created perfect. There was... You know, the good Lord put painstaking um, thought in, in how he was made. And he was exalted, but he wanted to be worshipped. And that, you know, that, that became, you know what I mean? He, he, he started that, that wandering eye, right? Instead of, you know, being okay with who he was, you know what I'm saying? As you said, he wanted more, right? So in that wanting more, he started looking around and longing for, what really wasn't rightfully his, you know what I'm saying? And he, he felt with, with, you know, while he, 
was ne next to God, right, um, it, he began to delude himself and, and, and feel like he was worthy of the same, you know, worship and adoration that his creator, um, you know what I'm saying, was, it was justly, you know, in, in right of. So um, it began, he began longing and, you know, that, 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 that eye of envy began, began to kind of uh, show itself. And, you know, um, he became our first hater, right? <laughs> as, as the terms that we use today, uh, you know, for those that, are, that work against us, right? He became, he became the first hater. Um, says, the, um, well, I, I, I'll go to this other part of the question. What, when Lucifer rebelled, in what ways could have God responded? And maybe why didn't he? What are some of the ways God could have responded? Ms. Kim. He could have taken him out yep. right then and there. Yep. Um, but I think he didn't for the rest of the world's sake because everybody, you know, is watching to see how God will react. And so he has to uh, make sure not only, I mean, he's love, so he doesn't want to do it anyway, mm -hmm. but he has to show that with love, there's also discipline and consequences, you know, for people who don't choose to stay in that safety zone. Yes. You know, Elder, you said that Satan was the first hater, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I submit that he was also the first narcissist, perhaps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And that narcissism, that pride and willfulness. So God, God could have given, given him another chance, right? Mm -hmm. yep. He could, he could have worked and, and, with him. And I'm sure he gave him plenty, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what and, I'm saying? and he could have worked with him and he could have kept working with him. But, you know, there's something that I think God felt like, okay, he needs to um, be out of this realm. Because if he stays in this realm... He already got a third of the angels. He can get up to half of them. You yep. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he saw fit to get him out of the environment completely. And to me, that reminds me today of, you know, when we're interacting with narcissists, you have to go no contact with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't yep. be in their presence anymore because they'll still have that opportunity to influence you or manipulate you or things of that nature. So, you know, I think God in causing such a great separation and getting him totally out of the environment that's almost an object lesson for us to remove ourselves from the presence of people who are just going to persistently try to manipulate and who mean us no good. Amen. Amen. Brother Mike, right over here. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, that's a question I've actually been struggling with because why didn't he destroy Satan, but yet he destroyed people, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, because of what they were doing in their hearts? But Satan, his heart would never change either. So the reasons why, I don't know. But that's a question because he's done it once, uh, but he didn't do it other times. So, well, I mean, I, I think the, the 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 story with Satan is, is is there's a different long game, right? So you know, um, while I, I I agree in the in the question of well, why not why why here and not there, right? Um, I think uh, and the lesson kind of pointed us to it. Um, one, one of the things is this plan of redemption that we're in the midst of, you, you know what I mean? And all that may happen in between and the results of sin that come sometimes for us, um, you know, they don't match and, and they don't feel good. And um, we question why, right? Um, it's still a part of a bigger plan. And that bigger plan is just as j Satan challenged God's character. You understand what I'm saying? And what we're in the midst of in the plan of redemption is God allowing Satan's character to be revealed. For us to be able to see that he's a liar, he's a deceiver, he wants no good from us. So while he can whisper in our ears and, and, and plant his, his, his most effective weapon is the seed of doubt, right? Because as, as, as soon as we start questioning, then, you know what I mean, it, it opens the, the, the doors for a lot of other things that will get us off the mark. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that, that doubt that he, that he faces in front of us as, as one of his most effective tools in his deception, 
Um, you think about it, he did it in heaven, which is the reason why there was a separation. And then he's, he's, he's further, further perpetrated that here. We're, we're in the midst of it, and we're in the middle of it to, to ultimately, he will be eradicated, and he will, be, he, he will have his end. But there's, there needs to be no doubt as to what, when, and why. And that's, that's what's going on. Sister Muriel. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, I think, too, that Satan was the chief beside God. He knew everything about God. So when he rebelled, God said, okay, I'm going to let you ride out your storm. When I read the lesson, what came to me is parenting. When our children go where we don't want them to go, we don't kill them. We leave them because if we lay the right foundation, we know they will, with the Holy Spirit, come back. So God is merciful then. He's still merciful now. And remember, these things are for our example. So it's not that especially to my brother. It's not that he didn't do it for Satan, but he did it for someone in Gomorrah. They were warned. Yeah. And, they and, were and, warned. And somebody also pleaded, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, all the way down from, it started at, what, I think 50? And all the way down to 10. If there's 10 people found that, you know, are, you know, worthy of, of keeping around, in, in a sense, would you not destroy the city? And... Um, you know, it was in the, even in that bartering, God was like, yeah, if you find 10 people that, you know, are, are, are righteous, they're pure, you know what I'm saying, or they're good, then, you know, it, the city can be saved. And it wasn't that type of situation. Um, you know, I think sometimes, I, you know, one of the ways to look at it, too, is that, you know, when it seems very harsh, when, when in the Bible, you know, there's people killed or eradicated, whatever you want to say, that it basically there's death to a group of people. Um, I mean, I think we, we, it would be helpful to us to also think about it, okay? In God's infinite mercy, in, in you know, he doesn't want to kill us. It's, that's not, you know, it, 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 that's not, he, he would rather no, none of us ever, ever perish. But what there is, when, when there's no good in you, that, there, that, that's, that seems to be where the line is drawn. You know what I'm saying? So I think even, even in, that, in that battle in heaven, while we know that Lucifer is still, well, not Lucifer, now Satan and the devil. While we know the devil is still around and he's still here wreaking havoc, um, the, first, the first line was drawn in him being removed from heaven, him and his angels, because God wants nobody around that, aren't willing participants, in a sense. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? That's the choice that we're given. So they hashed it out, they battled it out, and then there was a, there was a time to choose. And as they chose what they chose, then there, there, there were some consequences that were, that were met. Brother Teacher, also, yes. <clears throat> if I may add, um, God is just and merciful. And I think the example you gave of, you went from 50 to 10, uh, showed the angels in the world that God was willing if there were 10 people in that city who would turn away and, and repent, he was willing to save it. Mm -hmm. So I think his mercy and the love that God have for the world was shown through that. Had Satan been taken out in the very beginning, the love of God would not have been revealed. Matter of fact, the angels would probably have been a little bit more afraid of God yeah. because of what he did. And they would think the same thing would happen to them. So I can see why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah but didn't to take out Satan because his character would not have been revealed. His true character would not have been revealed had he taken out Satan. Yeah. And I, th I think that, um, you know, just as you're saying, another, another thought pops in my head, you know, S Satan challenged God in a perfect place. You understand what I'm saying? Heaven is 
even to this day, is, is, a, is, is, a, is a perfect place. Um, so getting back to what, what Daryl said, him, there, there, is a, there is a process being played out for Satan's full character to be shown to, to the universe, not just earth. You know what I'm saying? There, there, are many, there are many watchers of what's going on. And like I said, when, when that end finally comes, it's to eradicate, A, any doubt that God's, you know what I'm saying, his government and his love is, is, is faulty and that there will be no question as to why so that those of us who are left behind, right, um, there's never, the, the, the goal now is for this never to happen again. So it ends up being a painstaking process. Sister Yvette. Okay, a few things is that um, the lesson reminds us that the dev, um, God didn't create the devil, didn't create him. Mm. He created a bright, beautiful mm. being Amen. called Lucifer. Amen. And yep. that goes to show that, remember, the Lord said when he come back, we will have a new name. Because this name we have is from a sinful earth, so we are looking forward to that new name in glory. Like Lucifer, when we sinned, that name was taken away. Mm. It was the devil, the old serpent, and Satan. And it also reminds me that, you know, if it was the war was in heaven, the war is in the church. Mm. We can't stay aside mm. that, okay, I'm not a part of it. It's either good or evil. It's a controversy. There's no middle ground. You have to be either on good or on evil. And so many times we come to church and we're like, okay, the sister said so, so and so about me. It's not the sister. It's good and evil right here. Don't get it personal. Satan is fighting and he's fighting to win. But we know that Jesus already won the battle for us. So we can be on the willing side. All we have to do is choose Jesus daily. Amen. Amen. Just to highlight her, her statement and we'll move on. Um, the lesson says... Um, as she just said, God did not create a devil. He created a being of dazzling brightness named Lucifer. It says, this angelic being was created perfect, included in this perfection was freedom of choice, a fundamental principle of God's government, which runs by love, not coercion. So, um, and once again, like a Lucifer, he, de he desired to worship that belonged to God. And, and even though he was highly exalted, that wasn't good enough for him. So, um, moving on, um, it says, uh, there's no logical explanation for why Lucifer was this perfect angel. I'm sorry. There was no log logical explanation for why Lucifer, this perfect angel, should have allowed pride and jealousy to take root in his heart and grow into rebellion against his creator. Satan's pride ripened into open rebellion. He accused God of being unjust and unfair. He infected the angels with his doubts and accusations. Revelations 12, 4 says, And his tail drew the, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Um, how many angels, and it was kind of mentioned already, how many angels fell with Lucifer? A third. And do we think that, you know, in probability, at some point in time, he might have had more than a third of the angels pondering things with him, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I think that that, you know, I think that, that, that probably was the battle, right? The, the, the fight was, um, I was part of the fight. I ain't going to say that's, that was the fight. That was part of the fight is, is, or why it took so long. Yes, ma'am. What it reminded me of is um, when I think of the angels and, you know, all that they were, you know, God made them perfect. Um, but it just shows how, you use the word infect. Mm -hmm. It just shows how um, an infection can grow and fester until it just totally derails your whole outlook on what, you're, on what God intended your life to be. So it's really, it, it's, it's kind of really unnerving that you can have 
um, Satan was he had he was all that in a bag of chips, mm-hmm. and um, and I I think he just someone used it earlier became full of himself and decided why well, stop here let me just be God yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. and that's when his downfall started um, and I just think it's it's a powerful statement for our walk with God we really have to make sure that we are really connected and not just going through the motions. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I was just saying, you know, I, I would just add to that, not really add to it. Um, uh, uh, he's just a master of deception, right? That's, that's, what, that's what his, that is his, that's, the, that's his foundation, his deception, right? Um, and, and to see how good he, to see how good he is, I mean, we, we look at, we, we go into the Garden of Eden, and we go to the whole, you know, I mean, I know sometimes when we read the verses, so, you know, we can read through them very quickly, and, you know, we kind of we maybe gives us a picture that Eve was deceived very quickly, you know what I'm saying, and that she just, you know, in a two-minute conversation went from, you know, not being, not questioning God to questioning God to, you know what I'm saying, taking the fruit and eating the fruit, right? But in, in, in the ingredients of that story shows, you know, how that little seed of doubt can derail what makes most sense to us, right? The, the good Lord placed Adam and Eve in the garden, gave them all kind of choices, and he only said one thing to stay away from, and that became the thread that, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that unraveled, you know, life, in, 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 you know, and in, in where we are as, as it is. Sister Muriel. And further down in the lesson, you know, when, you, when I first started reading it, I'm doing this uh, quarter, and I reflected on last quarter, I said to myself, Is, isn't this writer good? Because he started out by telling us all what Satan has done. But as we go to the lesson on Wednesday, Wednesday mm-hmm. sort of put me back in the pick-me-up mood where love finds its way. Mm-hmm. You know, that God promises that it doesn't matter what we go through. You know, as the lesson says, there are times when, as human beings, I know I do, when things got rough, I wonder, Lord, where are you? Yes. You know, oh my gosh. I wonder, Lord, where are you? But love find its way and as long as we keep going there will be disappointment there will be all kind of obstacle in our way but as long as we remember the cross his death and his resurrection we'll we'll be able to work through it amen sister kim yeah um, another thought that came across my mind is um when the angels were able to be deceived i mean we're talking about beings that lived with God every day, Mm -hmm. it just brought to mind the scripture that even the very elect can be deceived. So we we really have to, really have to be prayerful and um, really stay as close to God as we can so that we're not part of that elect that's deceived. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Brother Joseph, you got two over here. Yeah, uh, my sister talked about an infection. So in the world, we are like 8 billion people, and that's a lot of people. So there's like only one Satan destroying 8 billion people. So my thinking is, as a father who is God, why will we not take just the one out to save the 8 billion? Because it's, it's, it's going to infect anybody at the end of the day. So. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I'm overthinking, but as a father. Um, well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, like I said, it's one of those situations where his character was being challenged, right? So part of this is the full revelation of 
what's good and what's not. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, for God's character to be proven um, sound and his judgment correct and right as, as, as we are taught. And um, f- for the deception that, that is in, in Satan's hands and, and how he approaches us all, um, for that to be fully revealed so that there's no doubt. Like I said, th- th- this is now to remove doubt as to why when things end, the good Lord is, is he has to, he has to, he has to sit back and it, it's not something he, he's doing easily, but he sits back and has to let all this stuff play out in front so that, like I said, the full picture of what your choice is in life and death is revealed with no question. And that, for us, it just, it just means we have to deal with some difficult things and things that we don't like and they don't feel good, you know what I mean? But we also, as Sister Muriel says, there's, there's an answer that, you know what I mean, allows us to, to hold our head up and stick our chest out and ride through it, you know what I mean? Brother Joseph. Um, uh, as you're talking about simple de- deception, um, Jesus uh, never taught to talk with the devil. He used scripture. Well, the devil used scripture, but... At the meantime, the same time Jesus said it is written, and whatever Satan comes with is not written. Satan, the Bible mentioned, is a liar from the beginning. And we have to be very careful by defending self. I'm not using the word defending against the enemy, because the Bible said, let this mind be in us. And if it's not in us, when the enemy come along, then we find ourselves defending ourselves instead of defending, saying, it is written and mentioned the word of God, and the enemy will flee from us. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to slide over to uh, Tuesday's lesson, and um, I'm going to look at Genesis uh, 3, 1 through 3. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field, and the Lord had, I'm sorry, than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat from every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Then Romans 3.23 and 5.12 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Um, Then the question was asked in the lesson, um, what do these texts have in common? And then describe the ultimate results of sin that plagued the entire human race. What what are the ultimate results of sin? Death, right? Um, In my notes, I put... um, Choosing sin is choosing death, as we all are sinners. So sin and death are now a default. Choosing life is a choice that many will miss. I mean, we can all agree that, you know, without the good Lord's direction, without our submitting to his will, minute by minute and day by day, um, we're going to fail in, in, in being right. Is that, is that correct? So the sin that, is, as, that, that results in, 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 in that truth, um, it, like I said, we, you know, death is our default. <laughs> but moving on to Wednesday's lesson, as, as, as Sister uh, Muriel said, love finds a way, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, Sister Yvette? Okay, when he talks about the, the, the controversy, the war, it comes down to us on planet Earth. And if we notice, we are living in a time where, I mean, we can't avoid it because, I mean, it's right there. Controversy, oh, whether I should remain a woman or should I change to a man. <laughs> the controversy, whether should I worship on Sabbath or worship on Sunday. So many controversies here, it comes down to us and we have to make that choice. And it comes to... When we look at what the lesson, the topic is a great controversy. Now, mm-hmm. we have this book. 
that every household should have one of this book because it tells us exactly what is happening right now. And the writer, Mark Finley, he used excerpts from this book. And if, by way of commercial, if you don't have it, we have a lot of this book right here. <laughs> amen, and we amen. should read amen. it to know exactly what is going on. Keep because, on read it, right? Yeah, keep on have, reading. Because we guess have what? And read. <laughs> yeah, because this is a reality. We can't say, okay, well, I'm not among the controversy. We are, because we yes. have to choose daily yep. and so many things we look and we are like it's coming closer and closer to us and how do we do it oh we are not a part of it but we are a part of it because we don't believe in it but oh yes I can go on and hug it up and everything we have to stand for God and this is a choice in the end time we are either for good or we are for evil there is no middle ground amen amen so I mean that, and that's that's my thing man I, I you know I like to say the great the gray area of life is man's delusion it's black and white, man. It just is. You might not like that statement, you know what I'm saying, because it, you know, it, it, it makes you have to make tough decisions, right? It puts you in the mirror and highlights how horrible you are. I speak first. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Um, but ultimately, what's your, what, what, is it, what is your goal? What is it you want? You know what I'm saying? And if you say heaven is your goal, then you better be siding with what's right. And you better be making sure you're searching for what really is right. You know what I mean? And not a version of right or not a right, right that just suits you. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this, is, this is right and wrong. You know what I mean? It, it, and that's the black and white of it. Um, I think that, you know, another one of the things I like to say, man, is the right thing is the easiest hard thing to do. Right? I mean, it's... it's we think about it. You have, at every, we wake up with choices. That's what we got. All day is choices. You have a right choice and you have a wrong choice to everything, right? To the little things of, you know, maybe your wife responded to you in a way that was a little gruff and you chose to give back the same energy. Or, you know what I'm saying? You, you were able to Take the, take the teeth to hit the, 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 the tip of the tongue. You know what I'm saying? Pause long enough to, to, to let things, you know what? She ain't been feeling good for the last two days. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like the bottom line is you're, you, you're either you're able to pause enough to keep your mouth shut and, do, and, and, and make a better decision, right? And that's, okay, it's all right. I'm just going to, I don't have to respond to that, right? You, you know what I'm saying? Um, so even if it's those choices or if it's a straight-up choice, you know, somebody left their purse next to you, you see a, a, a wad of money sitting inside of it, and you can stick your hand in there and grab the, you know, that's a bigger decision that sometimes we make it a little easier to choose what's right, right? But when it's all said and done, it's right and wrong. And like I said, the right thing is the easiest, hard thing to do. We make it hard, though. Okay? As we're closing, I, 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 I'll give you this. So in, in, in that thought process, in every decision that you make, how many right decisions are there? One. Easy. Now, in, in, in how we live, in the gray area, we like to delude ourselves in. After you walk away from the one right decision, what is everything else? It's wrong. But we like to say not so wrong. We like to, you know what I'm saying? We like to do all these little things whether it be classifying things as little white lies or, or just stuff that just well, isn't so bad. No. If you didn't do what was right, you did what was wrong. And now you have, you have every cause has an effect. So now that you've chose something wrong, you finna get something back that ain't finna be good for you. Doesn't mean it's happening right away. Doesn't mean it's happening tomorrow. But one thing my kids have always heard from me their whole life, every cause has an effect. Your good causes have good effects. Your bad causes have bad effects. So sometimes that means years down the road, you're hit with calamity and chaos, and you're thinking to yourself, good Lord, why is this happening? What's going on? No, 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 no. No, you weren't thinking about all the time you was being hard-headed and, and, and going full of nonsense in your youth or 
in, in other areas of your life. Now we fast forward it to maybe you, you, you got a little better a, a, approach to life and you, and you got God, you know what I'm saying, a little more in the center of it. And now here's time, here's time to test. Here's, now we're time to test where you're at. And the first thing we do is jump right off the train. Right? You forget. Look. Or I'll give this analogy. And we'll go back to the relationship thing. Think about it. So say, and you know, I'm, I'm speaking not just to married couples. I'll, I'll say brothers and sisters or whatever. Say you guys just are just button heads, right? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you've had a conversation and some things have been revealed and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're, you're, your, your loved one says, hey, I don't like you do A, B, and C. And it makes me feel, you know what I'm saying, C, D, and F. And you take that and you, and you, and you, and you, you, you soak up, you, you, you hear it, right? So now you attempt to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you admit, you know what, I, I might be wrong. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something different. But then you, you still approach that with scores, with a score, with a score card. So now, the next three times that you did A, B, and C that your, your loved one didn't like, and you chose to do something different, it still wasn't wholehearted because you're just keeping score. Well, I didn't, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. Then the fourth time, you go right back to what was normal with the caveat, well, this time, this time, and this time, I didn't even say nothing. And you still acted a certain way. But why are you keeping score still? Like, why, why, why? The bottom line is, if, if, if you're going to just do what's right for, 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 for right's sake, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there shouldn't be anything else left with it. Like, there should be nothing, there's no, there's, there, there's no hooks that you should have in what you're doing that's right, if it's in your heart. You know what I'm saying? So, Pastor. In all this, we have to understand one thing. That is, no matter how we stretch our minds, no matter how we try to reason, we cannot understand God. Mm. Amen. We will never reach the place of understanding, especially in this thing about why did he allow Lucifer to live and, and the great controversy, etc. There are things about God we can't grasp. We'll never be able to grasp. But he has given us enough understanding of who he is to be able to love him and to have faith and trust in him. But there are so many people out there only concerned about why doesn't God do this? Or why didn't God do that? Or I don't understand. We can't understand everything about God because he is God. But we could love him. We could trust him and have faith in him because of who he has revealed himself to be. Amen. Amen. One more, Brother Joseph. We are right about a time. Um, this week was one, one of those things too. This guy was wrestling and asking me a whole lot of questions. And I said, man, you're not going to understand. I don't understand everything. And I, I remind him, I said, uh, the Bible said there's a way. It always seems right unto a man. It seems right in our eyes. It seems right to do this. And it seems right. But in God's way, it's not right. The Bible said the end of it is dead. And I, I, I mentioned uh, the heaven declare the glory of God. We can't even understand that. So just see it, look, and believe you're living in the land of the living. And we have to accept it that ourselves, we don't know it all. And we'll never know it until the day Christ comes and then we'll be with him. Then all these questions we have can answer. But for now, trust God, obey him, and live, as, live in obedience to his word. Amen. Amen. So, you know, let's, just, let's, let's, let's live our lives a little more simplified. And like I said, while I say the right thing is the easiest hard thing to do, if we just decide to make the one right choice, I think things will line up, chaos and, 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 and calamity will, will dissipate, and uh, we'll find ourselves, you know, moving in a, in a, in a wonderful and good direction. So, um, we thank you for your time, and uh, we, we have blessings for the rest of the day for you.
Camp Yava Pines family. My name is Melanie Cruz and I am thrilled to be your new Camp Ministries Director for the Arizona Conference. And today I have some really exciting news for you about our summer camp for 2024. Our theme is everlasting. In a world that is constantly changing around us, one thing we know for sure is our God is everlasting and so is His enduring love. As we prepare for an amazing summer, Camp Yava Pines is currently accepting applications for job opportunities. Whether you are passionate about counseling or leading in activities or even working behind the scenes, there's a little something for everyone. If you're interested, please go to CampYavapines.com. And as for our campers, get ready! Registration opens March 4th. And we want you to be a part of this unforgettable experience. Camp Yavapines is not just a place. It's a community where friendships are forged, memories are made, and lives are forever changed. Let's make it an everlasting adventure. I can't wait to meet you. See you at Camp Yavapines. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Where are kids? Kids, where are you? Come on in. This is your time. Parents, get your kids. Come on in, kids. This is your time. Come on up. Come on up. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, rather they're the white, all our precious in his sight. Come on. Little children of the world, Jesus loves the poor children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, all our precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Pray for, pray for all the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all our precious in his sight. Pray for all the ch children of the world. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay, good morning, bigger boys and girls. Okay, because we are children of God. So, this morning's story is about a little boy. He was 10 years old, and his name was Johnny. Do we have any Johnny here? Okay, so Johnny had a pet, and his pet was a pet donkey. And do you imagine having, do you have children have pets? Anybody have a pet donkey? No, well, Johnny had a pet donkey. But the donkey was getting a little sick and everything. No, he went to church that Sabbath. And the pastor's sermon, the topic was prayer changes things. So Johnny thought about it that I wonder if the pastor could come to my house and pray for my donkey so that my donkey would feel better. Johnny's mother, don't go to pastor with that. Pastor have so many things to take care of. Pastor have to do weddings and funerals and counseling. Don't bother pastor to pray for a donkey. This is just a donkey. Anyway, the Sabbath was over. They went home and Sunday, guess who called? Pastor called to say, oh, I am in your community. 
I'm going to come over just to check on the family. And Johnny's like, yes, I'm going to ask pastor to pray for my donkey. Mother was like, don't bother pastor with that. Pastor have more important thing to do. So when pastor came and what, was talking to the family, and then mom ran upstairs to take care of the baby. Johnny went over to pastor and said, pastor, I have my donkey and he's sick. Could you pray for my donkey? Remember, you preached Sabbath that prior changes things. And of course, pastor was like, I don't know how to pray for a donkey. Anyway, he took pastor to where the donkey was. And pastor looked at Johnny. And he looked at the donkey. And he looked at Johnny, looked at the donkey. And then he said, poor little thing. You're looking so thin. If you live, you live. And if you die, you die. Amen. And that was the prayer. Johnny wasn't too happy with the prayer, but nevertheless, Pastor left, and of course he was there. And in the afternoon, he noticed that the donkey was standing, and the donkey started eating again. And a few days, guess what? The donkey was okay. And of course, he said, well, prayer really changes things. But a few weeks after that, guess what happened? Pastor gets sick. And Pastor was in the hospital, and they said, well... Pastor doesn't seem like he's going to make it. So he sent for all his family and all his friends. And he said, please, because he and Johnny become good friends, let Johnny come and visit me. While they were in the hospital, they sang and all the elders and everybody. And he said, let's pray for Pastor. And Johnny's like, I want to pray, I want to pray. And he looked at Pastor and he looked at the other people. He said, Poor little thing. If you live, you live. And if you die, you die. Amen. And all of a sudden, pastor start laughing and he start chuckling and whatever. Because guess what? Something was growing in his throat and the doctor said, we can't do anything about it. And by him laughing and chuckling and everything, then pastor start throwing up and everything. And the doctors came and they're like, oh, it's an emergency. Guess what happened? The thing that was in pastor's throat came out. And pastor was made whole again. And the mother and father was like, why did you pray that prayer? We taught you good prayer, whatever. Johnny said, that's the same prayer that healed my donkey. So that prayer must can heal pastor too. And from that day, pastor and Johnny become very good friends. Now, I don't know if it is Pastor Williams so if you never talked to Pastor Williams before, after the service, you go to talk to Pastor Williams and said, Pastor, is it, was it you in the story? I don't know. He just said a pastor. So this is your opportunity to go and talk to Pastor afterwards and find out if it was about him. So boys and girls, the moral of the story is prayer changes thing. And just like how Johnny was paying attention in church, you must be able to pay attention and remember the topic of the sermon each week. So who would like to pray? Because prayer changes things. Anybody would like to pray? Nobody want to pray? Caleb, you want to pray? Okay. Caleb is going to pray. Close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for another day of life. Thank for everyone coming here and coming here safely. Help us not take things for granted. And amen. 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 Thank you, boys and girls. Go back to your seat. God is good. And all the time? Ah, oh, yes. He is surely good. That's why we are here this morning to lift our hearts and voices in praise to him. I want to add with the church clerk this morning, early this morning, to say welcome to the Phoenix Beacon Light Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we seek to be one in Christ, one in love, and one in ministry. Is there anybody here for the very first time this morning, uh, apart from the singers? We'll talk about them later, but anybody here walk into the church for the very first time? I have a gift for you. Oh, Lord. oh right. One person in the back. Is there anybody else? 
We are so happy that you are here. May God bless you. We trust that you will enjoy it so much. You will come again. Um, am I missing anybody else? Okay. Um, he hello. Don't go just yet. Don't go just yet. Okay. Today is a special day for you. <laughs> Today is Elia's birthday. <laughs> it's good to have a birthday, but it's good to have a birthday even on a Sabbath. Amen. All right. And she's just come up to give people gifts and um, so on. So let's sing happy birthday for her. Yes? Because uh, she's here as the usher this morning, and this is her birthday. What are you saying? It's Kim's birthday. Come out, Kim. Come out, Kim. Come out. Come. Just come forward. We'll sing happy birthday for the both of you. Look at that. Two Sabbath birthdays for Kim and Elia. Do, so do you all know that you were born on the same day? Yes. Do you know that you were the same age? I mean, no, you were born on the same day, but not the same. All right. Okay. Uh, Tamika, start it for me. Stop. <laughs> Don't sing it as a hymn. Don't sing it as a hymn. Dig it, uh, sing it with some beat. Come on. Let's, let's, let's go. Uh huh. Elior and Kim. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy birthday. All right. Please remember our midweek prayer meeting every Wednesday for one hour, seven to eight p.m. every Wednesday. We have been having a wonderful time testifying about God's goodness and his mercy. We trust that you will be able to join us in this coming week. God bless. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. If the deacons would come forward to lift this morning tithes and offerings. <clears throat> You know, in Malachi, and we haven't read it in a while, but he asked a question, will a man rob God? And he says, he asked the question, have we, how have we robbed God? He says, in tithes and offerings. Why would you think that Malachi would ask that question? Because people were being neglectful of returning to God what he has given them. He tells us that we are cursed when we refuse to turn a tithe to God, a tithe and an offering. He tells us to bring the tithes to where? And to his storehouse. And the tithes we know go to, for many purposes. One is to help the pastor to have a, a make a living, be able to provide for his family. Uh, the other thing is that it promotes programs for the church around not only locally but around the world to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ but you know the best part of what I like about what Malachi has to say is that it says that when we return a tithe God will rebuke the devourer for our sake how many of you guys like the devourer to be rebu rebuked for your sake and he's not only talking financially but he's talking about your health you're talking about your home your children, all the bad things that Satan has in store for us, God's saying he will cause all that to be rebuked if we're faithful to him. So let's keep that in mind as God blesses us with an income to be able to share with him. And he only asks for 10% of that. Would everyone rise and with the deacon, our, we're going to pray for the offering this morning. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for your wonderful day of the Sabbath that you've given us. 
We pray for the means that you've given us, Lord, to be able to, to live and, and provide for our families. But most of all, Lord, we just want to thank you for who you are. Help us to be faithful in everything we do, including our tithe and offering, Lord. And forgive us where we've fallen short. And help us, Lord, to, to stand up, Lord, and to get, get things right where we've missed, had missteps. We want to thank you again for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me and may I do my honest part to win that soul for thee. Let's say that one more time. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me and may I do my honest part to win that soul for thee. And one of the simplest and easiest thing we have asked you to do um, in reaching out to be an instrument through which God can save people is to write the names of people you would like to see in the kingdom on a slip of paper, put it in this jar, and we present these names to God every Sabbath. You, 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 you can't ask for something easier or simpler than this. So if you have not brought a list here, you are causing somebody to miss out on a tremendous blessing. Our heads about our eyes are closed as we lift these names to God. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now for these individuals. Names on a card, but they are people loved by God. And it is your desire to save them. We thank you for those who have placed the names on these cards. And we thank you that you are willing through your Holy Spirit to draw them to you even at this moment. Wherever they are, in whatever circumstances they find themselves, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they will hear that still small voice giving them the message, there's a God who loves them and who wants to save them. Grant, O oh God, that even in this church, we'll be able to celebrate with some of these people as they come and testify of how they were out there and how God brought them into his fold to be saved. Thank you. And may we do our part to win them for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much to my elders. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Lori Clark, could you join me? Uh, she was, uh, while I was in the lesson study, was asking that I come and talk to her. And I just had a moment, but I said, look, your, your heart is so heavy. Why not just Share it not only with me, but with the church. So I'll give her a few moments before we pray for her. Tell us what's happening. Before I tell you what's happening, let me tell you how God got jokes. I came here with a very heavy heart this morning. And I walked through the door and I saw a young man that I've been following his mu the, the family's music ministry for years and years and years and years. And I walked through and my heart just lifted. And then I heard about the birthdays. And then my heart just lifted. See, you know, God is so good. Um, I have a sister who has two stepchildren that she raised from they were 12 and 10. They're now 37 and 35. She called me Monday morning. She said the oldest one, Tremaine, was just diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And, you know, we prayed about that. And then 
Thursday morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, she called and said the younger one, Travis, that's the one we had for a long time because after Tremaine graduated from high school, he went back to his mother. But Travis stayed with us for another 12 years before he went back. So we had him for a long time. Travis got so depressed that he went out and ov overdosed on drugs. And they found him, resuscitated him, took him to the hospital. That was Monday after she called us. And Thursday morning, Travis said he felt fine. He discharged himself from the hospital and went home and died. We are so distraught about it. But like I said, God is good. He brought some joy to my heart this morning. But I would love if you guys would pray for my sister, Anne, her husband, Roy, and another son, Isaiah, that they would just hold on to God to know that weeping might come at night, but joy comes in the morning. So please, thank you. Amen. Hold on. Our Father, our hearts go out to this family. We can pray for them, but we, it's difficult for us to put ourselves exactly in their place and understand the depth of the sorrow that they are going through right now. We thank you for Sister Clark who has come here this morning with a heavy heart, but even by coming here, you have placed situations to lift her spirits. But as part of this family, we pause in this service to ask for your Holy Spirit, the divine comforter and strength to be divinely close to her and support her to the extent that she would be able to support the others. Bless her and may the rest of this service and the communion service bring a depth of peace that goes far beyond what any human being can do for her. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Oh, it's me again. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a group that some of you have heard of and some of you don't know, but they call themselves the Chitons Ministry. Ministries. It's uh, a father, a mother, and five singing children. They come to us all the way from Canada. They are touring the U.S. right at this moment. And Michelle, we thank you for alerting us of their presence here in the valley. Thank you very much. So I contacted them and they wanted to be, they have heard of Beacon Light and they, they wanted to be here, but there was no contact. These individuals, I, I, I just checked with the dad because I heard that they sang in the White House. And when I checked with him, he said, we sang there many, many times in the White House. Not only that, I have here, they have received the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award for community work from President Biden. And I, I think that was last year. June, and later this year, they would be back in the White House. Yeah. You all live there. <laughs> I, I asked the dad to...
come and tell us a little more about his family because I can share stuff, but um, I'm just saying it. So if the dad can uh, come and tell us a little more about uh, this Lifetime Achievement Award, in other words, not just singing the gospel and, and sharing the music, but some of the, the, the tremendous work they are doing as a family. And give him a hearty amen. amen. Welcome. Thank you, oh, you have your own microphone. I was yes, about I to. Yes, I do. Thank Go you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, church. Uh, it's really an honor to be here. Um, as God would have it, your pastor was my pastor in 1985. Wow. I didn't know that. He did not know that. <laughs> I, I was a student in England, and um, I attended the Chiswick Seventh-day Adventist Church. And there was this tall, handsome Trinidadian man there. You did not. He did not pay me to say that. I, I, it was true. You did not. You did not say no tall. When you spoke to me, you did not say no tall, handsome. You say tall, tall and skinny man. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'm not that so skinny again. <laughs> yeah, and he was the pastor at Chiswick, and um, you know it was like an oasis for me. Um, you know, being in. Let, let, let me, let, sorry, let me yeah. interrupt you because. You are saying stuff that they'll say, how, how he was your pastor and he don't know you. The guy was living outside of London. That's correct. And from time to time, he would come and visit my church. That's correct. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, he would slip into the congregation and slip out again. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to explain that because you said I was your pastor and, it's, and, I, and I didn't really know you. So I just wanted to explain. Uh, and that's, where, that's what I was saying. It was like an oasis for me coming from school and, you know, being able to come into a church, you know, and kind of adopted a family then, you know. So thank you very much, Pastor. And um, my daughter, when we started speaking, and she said, Pastor Hamilton, I said, I, I know that name. I know Pastor Hamilton Williams. And then I called back and I asked him if he was pastor in England. And then he said, yes. So, you know, I'm in familiar territory, even if it's the first time I'm here. So we thank God for having a family that is worldwide, yes? And not only here, but extraterrestrial. One of these days, we'll be with all our families over there, yes? And, and that's the beauty of it. Thank you for having us. Um, just a little bit about our family. God has blessed our family. Let me introduce my wife because she's the boss down there. Karen, stand up, let the people see who you are. This is Karen, and um, we are a family in full time ministry. What does that mean? We don't just, you know, minister on the weekends, we minister every day of our lives. Um, a few years ago, we decided to, you know, drop everything, you know, shut down our businesses and go back into full-time ministry. And God allowed us, you know, to, to be a part of his work, and we are grateful. Um, our children have been homeschooled, so they've never been to, you know, the conventional school. And uh, we travel around, we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked. Um, we were on a trip to Africa in 2018, and um, when we got there, we saw there was a school that needed a lot of work. It was going to be shut down. It was an Adventist school, and they were taking children from the slums and educating them to change the cycle, you know, but they had no money to feed the children, and the school was going to be shut down. I looked at my wife. My wife looked at me, and we made a decision right then and there. Let's go back to Canada. Let's sell our house, and let's build a school. And Amen. yeah, that wow. was in, in, in January, we got back. In March, we sold the house. In September, they got their brand new classrooms, they got toilets, they got shower, you know, in a place where the children never used the toilet. They, you know, they, they were able to have running water. And, uh, you know, right now we are building an administrative block for them um, with uh, principal's office and 
teacher's lounge and a dining room and a kitchen where they can, you know, get food because, you know, some of the children come to school hungry and they leave school hungry also. But God has been good and he allowed us to be a part of his work. And, you know, there, there is a, a saying that we are his hands, we are his feet. And, you know, if we say, you know, somebody else will do it, nobody else might do it. And we thank God that he has given us the opportunity to be part of that. So we travel around and we minister in churches. And we do ask, you know, them for an offering. What today might be a little bit different. Because we do the afternoon program. We give our testimony. We tell the people about the work that we do. And, you know, then we, we ask for an offering. But um, that's how we support our ministry. We are not... Uh, we have no big organization. We have no overhead costs except in to feed our family and to put diesel in the bus and go on God's errand. Amen? Amen. But there's a, an encouragement I want to give to the church. Many times we want to do something for the Lord and we are afraid to step out and go, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to take care of our families? All his biddings are enablings. Amen. And once he asks us to go, he says, Lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. God has been with us. Amen. We have seen his hand. And you, I hope that will be evident in the children's ministry this morning, that you will see that they have experienced God. And we, you know, we just praise God that he allow us to be a part of that. So thank you very much again for having us. Let, Let hey, 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 lifetime award from President Biden. <laughs> Um, yeah, this past, well, they got a, a congressional award uh, a few years ago for work done on the streets of Brooklyn, New York. Um, can I just say a little, a little piece about Brooklyn? When we go to Brooklyn, New York, we had a kind of peculiar vehicle, a big black um, Savannah, and um, the, the, the homeless guys in New York, they knew our vehicle because every time we get into Brooklyn, they know they'll get food. And they know they'll get uh, some money for the hostel for the night so they can sleep in a little bit of warmth. And uh, there were days when we go to New York to minister, we didn't have place to sleep ourselves. So we sleep in our vehicle. Anybody know New York here? On Utica, there's a, a McDonald's there. That's our country home. We used to sleep right there <laughs> in that parking lot. But the, the homeless guys, when they see our vehicle, they put their hands up and say, here are our Canadian angels. That's how they call us, because they knew they'd get the food. And they will stop the vehicle and say, give me a tune. So the kids will get out of the van, put in the track into the system, and sing right there on the streets for the homeless guys. But when it's time to sleep at night, and we were in McDonald's parking lot, guess what? Our American angels, the homeless guys, they kept vigil around our vehicle for us at night. So, you know, God has a way of doing things that, you know, and, you know, being fed by a raven, that's our ravens, you know. But concerning the Lifetime Achievement Award, we do a lot of community work. We, we uh, minister to over 50,000 prisoners on a yearly basis. We, we do street ministry. We built a couple houses in the Caribbean from some who were displaced by fire and other stuff. Um, we feed the children of Africa. We pay the teachers. And that's all from our ministry. I mean, we have no other sources. But um, God has been good. And um, I guess, you know, some... People got wind of it, and they heard of the work we are doing, and uh, we were recommended for a Lifetime Achievement Award. And this past June, uh, from President Biden, the children got the Lifetime Achievement Award for community work. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what God placed on your heart, and it doesn't matter where you start, but everything that is done in the dark, whether it's good or evil, will come to light one of these days. And the Bible says that, you know, your gifting will bring you before great men. It is true. Young people, whatever the Lord places on your heart, don't be afraid. Go out and do it with all your might because there is a reward. Even if it's not on earth, it will be in heaven. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. Let me introduce... Please.
Let me introduce them one time as they come up. The yes. names. Just, okay. just hold one moment. Yeah. Just let me say that they are singing in five or six other churches in the valley, not Seventh Day Adventist churches. Yes. So they're doing a wonderful ministry day by day. I, I don't know how they do it. A mother and father and five children living in a bus. Uh, I mean, it's 45 feet, but still, it's five children. But it's a wonderful ministry, and it's just miraculous. Pastor, when you talk... Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done. No, 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 no. I'm glad you said that. The, you guys saw the bus in the parking lot? It's in the parking lot. Uh, we, we went to Pennsylvania, and we used to travel around in a suburban, too. And this gentleman looked at us, and he said, you cannot... You, you, you can't take your children around in that. You know, you, you can't take it. He said, what are you doing on Tuesday? Tuesday morning, he got us up. He said, come with me. I look at my wife. My wife looked at me, and we're like, we, we can't go and buy a vehicle now. We don't have money for that. And he said, come with me. When we got to the parking lot, he, we, he looked at the vehicles. He said, choose one. Wow. You guys thinking on Seventh Day Adventist here? You got to stop that for a while. We looked at the vehicles and we said, "No, we can't choose one of these. It would not be a good use of money because it was not much bigger than the one we had." So he said, "Well, okay, go look for something that you think you're gonna need and come back and tell me." So we went and my wife looked and she found that bus. It has two bathrooms and we got four ladies, men. You understand what I'm talking about? And she said, this is what we, we, we need. When she went back and we told him, we found something that we need. Um, and we told him, it's the bus. He said, okay, if that's what you need, that's what you need. And he wrote us a check and he said, go take up the bus. And uh, he said, okay, I'll forgive $50,000. But just go raise funds and pay me back now without interest and stuff like that, you know. So he paid, they paid for the bus and told us, go raise the funds and come back. And so this past January, we went back to, to NAACP in Pennsylvania to do um, the New Year's, no, Martin Luther King. When they went to the house and visited the, 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 the husband and wife, they said, we have a surprise for you. Okay, what is this surprise? My wife was scared, you know, what is this surprise? They came back and they said, we'll forgive you another $50,000. So the bus aside was bought by a Mennonite couple. Not Seventh-day Adventists. A Mennonite couple. They are the ones who bought that bus for us. And say, go raise the funds now and pay us back for it. It's a blessing, Pastor. I, I, uh, I know a little about RV. So I... They said they're coming and they, they're in an RV. I said, a family of seven in an RV? When the thing pull up, I said, but I know the code. I said, that's a $200,000 bus. <laughs> now I'm getting a little history of God. How, is how, how we managed to get it. Right, it's only right. God. Only God. And we thank him for it. So this is our family. This is our first daughter, Kezia. And second is Kendra, Jesse, Jaden, and then Kalina. Pray that you'll be blessed. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. It is a blessing for us to be here, as my dad said. Uh, we're just going to sing a couple songs for you. Our first song will be 75 in your hymnals. If you'd like to sing along with us, please feel free to do so because we are here to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
this next song that we're about to sing, we just want to dedicate it um, to Sister, I believe it's Lori Clark, if I remember correctly. Yes, we want to dedicate this song to you. It's easy when we are going through, you know, situations and heartache and all the chaos that goes on in this world to forget that our God, he loves us. Just like this song says, his love is unconditional. There's nothing we can do to make him love us. There's nothing do, we can do to make him stop loving us. No matter what, he always loves us. And he is able to identify with the things that we are going through. So we just want to dedicate this song as an encouragement to you. <laughs> I love you, Lord, 
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will say of the goodness of God And all my life you have been Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. In the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful mm-hmm. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me yeah. Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender It's fun enough, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All oh my life, God, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so glad With every breath that I am
I was saying when, for those who were hearing me in front, that um, I'm pausing because I'm asking God right at this moment what I should do. I don't think I would present my sermon. Um, I want you to sing that song again. Because on the table before us is the emblems of his broken body. The bread and the wine. I'll do a strange thing. Um, I will turn things on its head. Um, I don't know how it would work. Um, and, but I'm impressed. We're going to sing that song. I'm going to make an appeal. And immediately after the appeal, we'll pray together. And we will distribute the bread and the wine. Now, and we would wash feet after. Now, it's left up to you if you want to eat the bread and wine and then walk off and don't go and wash feet. That's completely up to you. But I'm impressed right now. And because of how I'm doing it, I am trusting that we will have enough of the emblems. Um, I'm not even sure of that. But let God do his thing. That, that song, that song. He alive. Wow. While they sing, if this message speaks to you, just leave wherever you are and come. Let's pray. There's a flower. That caused the life. Wow. That paid my way. Death is Christ. When it flowed down from the cross, my sins were gone. My sins were gone. If you feel moved, come. There is a That gave me life, but in three days he moved and rose to stand in my defense. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you. So I come to tell you that he saves To shout and to fall That he's coming back for you There is a blood that ties the blind it heals the sin the Lord finds. It has the power to free the bound, the chains they fall upon the ground. Oh, so far it has to cleanse my soul. And then his precious glory flow for me. Yeah. 
taking from you um, I have no idea but I'm moved to say to you don't move God is going to give you the strength uh, would the elders join me here who were supposed to help me with the communion would you join me from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, reading verses 23 and 24. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat this, is my body, which is broken. For you, this do in remembrance of me. And 25 and 26 say, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is in the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us pray. Our gracious God and our Father, we have been tremendously moved by the presentation of your gospel in song. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
telling us beyond the shadow of a doubt that he's alive. Yes. God. The one who shed his blood. The one whose body was battered and broken for us. He's alive. And he asks us, Lord, dear Lord, never to forget the tremendous sacrifice that was made for eternal salvation. Thus, we present to you the emblems of this bread and wine. O oh God, bless it so that as we partake, we would indeed become partakers of the divine nature. We pray for every single soul in this congregation today. And if anyone here who has not yet surrendered completely, oh God, may they not leave this service without yielding completely to you and getting ready for your coming in preparing for the next baptism. So, Lord, use these emblems as you have decreed, and we would give you the praise, honor, and glory that is due to your name. Amen. Amen. Those who are standing here, if you would return to your seats so that we could serve better, thank you. And with the deacons and deaconesses, who are ordained to serve, please join us. And the Chetans, uh, I want you to sing right now. I want you to choose what you want to sing. You, 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 you sang one earlier on and I forgot what it was. Now I wanted you to sing it again. I don't know exactly which one it was, but God will move you. Sing whatever you decide now. Don't wait for us, just move on. Oh, 
Because some of you would be, while you're still being served, because some of you would be a little challenged, um, I give you permission to open the open so you have it available when we are ready, so you can take your time. Is everyone served? If anyone is not served, raise your hand, please. Could someone serve our guests, please, up front?
We take the bread first. Simple but powerful emblem represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. Let us eat. Let's take the wine. Take your time, open it carefully. Represents the blood that was spilled for us. Let us drink. Now I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. How we thank you, Lord. How we thank you for what you were willing to do for us. We are ashamed when we think what you have done for us and what we sometimes think is too much to do for you. We humble ourselves before you asking your forgiveness and asking, oh God, that your spirit will truly come within us and live your life in and through us so that others may be drawn to the foot of the cross and they too will be saved in your eternal kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we would be dismissed here and we would go to the foot washing and we would be dismissed. We would not be coming back to the church as you complete. Deacon and deaconesses would take care of that, pray together, and we would leave. I would like you to remember that lunch is served and there is an important, interesting, and valuable program here this afternoon. Starting at what time? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yes. Uh, we pray that God would continue to bless and keep you. If there is anyone here who have been moved and God has spoken to your heart and you would like to be prepared for the next baptism, please see any one of the elders or myself and we will help you in that regard. Now to my friends. Your father said I was his pastor. And the pastor could direct. <laughs> so, what you're going to do for me, do now, is just for me. But the others will listen in. I don't, I, I hope you have it there, because I don't know exactly how this works, but you will tell me. That song which talks about you went to Muhammad's grave and you, that song, I want you to do it now.
that that is what's going to close us all. What's that? I don't believe this. He said he, we are in a world service. You just had spiritual bread. He says he's going to sing the song if I promise to give him roti. Because he knows I'm Trinidadian. inside and saw his bones so I traveled on to see Muhammad still wrapped up in his grief clothes then I journeyed to a where old Joseph, he left him lay, but the precious lamb cut on begotten, he was no longer in that grave. If you Oh, 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 oh,
Mother and Father, would you join us here? I, let's, let's just pray on you. Mother and Father, what a wonderful ministry you have been doing a great job God has been using you mightily and everybody here you have blessed us with your presence here today thank you thank you let us pray oh God the things you do. You have been using this family in a mighty way. To the extent that the White House has taken note of their work. We pray, O oh God, that you would use them even more as they humble themselves before you, as they continue to give themselves to you, use them as mighty instruments in your hand to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in prison, and give those on the streets hope. Bless their ministry. Bless them physically, with physical vigor and strength to continue this work. Bless them mentally. Lord, they have been homeschooled. But help them to go beyond what anyone could even imagine. These young people in their academic pursuits and their desire to minister in specific fields. So bless them physically, bless them ment mentally, and, and even more so, Lord, spiritually. May they always understand that there is even more because we cannot exhaust God's goodness and his mercy and what he would do to us. Bless their travels. Continue to protect them in that bus. May angels travel with them. And oh God, one day may they stand in the sea of glass and hear well done from your lips. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. 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 Go quickly before I ask you to sing again. <laughs> I want to say a very special thanks to the deacon and deaconesses who have done a wonderful job again. But I want to especially thank our head deaconess, Sister Vernice. This is a special design. And it's cute, isn't it? So lovely. Well done. Thank you. God bless you. Please remember we go to? Fort Washing. God bless you. joining our worship celebration today. Usually we hope you have been included. Usually we would take a, a offering for the poor, for the less fortunate at our communion service. So if you see the deacons at the door, that's what they are doing. It's a special offering we usually take at the communion. God bless. Thank you for joining our worship celebration today. We hope you have been encouraged and inspired by today's spoken word. If you would like to speak to the pastor or request special prayer, please call us at 602-285-9381 or visit us through our website at phoenixbeaconlight.com contact. Mm -hmm. Tune in next week at 10 a.m. 
right here at Phoenix Beacon Light Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we strive to be one in Christ, one in love, and one in ministry. Please tune in in person or on YouTube. May God bless you and keep you as you share his love. We hope to see you again next Sabbath. Now please stay tuned for our weekly announcements. In the goodness of God. 